Welcome back to our channel. Today we have a fascinating story to share with you that will take you on a journey through the sacred life of a revered guru, Lahiri Mahasaya. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be amazed as we delve into the spiritual experiences of Paramahansa Yogananda himself, based on chapter 31 of his autobiography book. Our story begins in the holy city of Benares, where Paramahansa Yogananda had the privilege of meeting Srimati Kashimoni, the life companion of Lahiri Mahasaya. Paramahansa Yogananda, having been baptized by Lahiri Mahasaya, was eager to hear more about the revered Guru's life. Let's join Yogananda on this mystical journey as he visits Srimati Kashimoni. As Yogananda enters Srimati Kashimoni's humble abode, he is greeted graciously by the venerable lady. Despite her age, she radiates a spiritual fragrance that captivates all who meet her. Yogananda, filled with anticipation, humbly requests to hear some incidents from her sacred life. Srimati Kashimoni, with her gentle motherly face, begins to narrate her profound experiences with Lahiri Mahasaya. She recalls a vivid dream she had in which she saw glorious angels floating above her with unimaginable grace. When she woke up, the room was enveloped in a dazzling light, and she saw Lahiri Mahasaya levitating in the lotus posture, surrounded by angels worshipping him. Astonished by this extraordinary sight, Srimati Kashimoni prostrated herself at Lahiri Mahasaya's feet, realizing his divine stature. She confessed her deep sense of shame for considering him her husband, and from that moment onwards, she accepted him as her guru. He gently touched her and accepted her as his disciple. In the same room where this divine encounter took place, Srimati Kashimoni shares another profound incident. She recollects the moment when Lahiri Mahasaya initiated her into Kriya Yoga. With a gentle touch on her forehead, Lahiri Mahasaya revealed to her the inner realms of consciousness and bestowed upon her the technique of Kriya Yoga. Zramati Kashimoni also confesses a sin she committed against her guru husband. Feeling neglected and forlorn, she once scathingly criticized Lahiri Mahasaya for not spending enough time with his family. At that moment, Lahiri Mahasaya disappeared, and Srimati Kashimoni realized her mistake. The room filled with a resounding voice, reminding her of the divine wealth she should seek instead of material riches. As we delve deeper into the life of Lahiri Mahasaya, we discover that he had many disciples, both men and women. The illustrious lady shares another fascinating incident involving Lahiri Mahasaya and a disciple who desired his photograph. Lahiri Mahasaya handed her a print, but reminded her that its true value lies in the divine protection it represents. Shortly after, a remarkable event occurred. Two disciples were studying the Bhagavad Gita with Lahiri Mahasaya's photograph hanging in the background. An electrical storm broke out, and lightning struck the book they were reading, but miraculously both devotees remained unharmed. The power of divine protection was evident as the photograph became a shield against the destructive forces of nature. Lahiri Mahasaya also performed miracles in connection with a woman disciple named Abhoya. On one occasion, she beseeched him to stop a departing train, and miraculously the wheels of the train stopped moving, leaving everyone in astonishment. Another time, she prayed for her ninth child to live, and through Lahiri Mahasaya's divine intercession, the child survived against all odds. Lahiri Mahasaya's greatness extended beyond the physical realm. He had a close friend, Swami Trilanga, who was reputed to be over 300 years old. Trilanga's extraordinary feats were witnessed by thousands as he defied physical laws and displayed his divine powers. Whether it was floating on water or sitting in meditation for extended periods, Trilanga mesmerized all who encountered him. One of Trilanga's disciples, Shankari Maiju, who received her training from him, was the only known disciple of Lahiri Mahasaya still alive during Yogananda's time. Shankari Maiju lived in seclusion in the Himalayas and visited Lahiri Mahasaya on various occasions. The connection between these two great souls spanned time and space, inspiring awe in those who witnessed their meetings. The remarkable experiences of Lahiri Mahasaya didn't end there. He displayed his divine power and wisdom in various ways. There was a skeptic who attempted to expose Trelanga as a charlatan by offering him a bucket of burning lime disguised as clabbered milk. To everyone's amazement, Trelanga consumed the entire contents without any harm. 
It was a testament to the power of divine consciousness that protected him. Another incident involved Lahiri Mahasaya, publicly honoring a householder in the presence of his disciples. When questioned by a disciple about this surprising act, Lahiri Mahasaya explained that the divine realization of a person goes beyond their external circumstances and that he saw the perfect self-realization in Lahiri Mahasaya even in his role as a worldly man. As we conclude this extraordinary journey through the life of Lahiri Mahasaya, we are reminded of the divine justice and omnipotence that governs this universe. Like Lahiri Mahasaya, we learn that vengeance is not in our hands, but in the hands of a higher power. The story of a divine kitten as Lahiri Mahasaya was referred to, teaches us that even stones will cry out in the name of peace, and divine law prevails in every aspect of creation. We hope you enjoyed this captivating story by Paramahansa Yogananda. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating spiritual content. Stay tuned for our next episode as we explore the lives of other great souls who walked this earth. Until then, may peace and divine blessings be upon you all. Goodbye.